Welcome to another edition of Inside Indiana Volleyball. I'm Sean Nash, along with Coach Sherry dunbar Kuzan. This past weekend, the Hoosiers split their matches. First on Wednesday night against Minnesota, a big win in four sets, and a crazy four set, 35-33. What was going through your head during that final set with the team trying to close out? Close out? Well, I was amazed, number one, that we still had a few substitutions left. You know, we're running the 6-2 in, in that situation, and we could still put some people back in, and we were debating on what we wanted to do. So to be at 35, 33 and still have some subs left was kind of crazy. Um, I haven't been a part of very many of those type of sets. Uh, when we played Maryland, it was 33, 31, but 35, 33 is very unusual. And what it really meant was both teams were playing really hard and, and both teams were competing, and I thought that was fantastic. Uh, and you mentioned the 6-2. You guys obviously went mm -hmm. to that against Northwestern. And apparently worked two wins in a row. Uh, I know last week I asked you about it and you said it was a viable option. Is it mm -hmm. even more of an option now with the results you've seen uh, two out of the three matches? Um, I, I do like it. I think, you know, definitely, you know, we were talking about it does kind of what we were wanting it to do and generating more offense. I think we got to find a consistent right side um, that's playing when Michaela's in the back row. So I know we've been going some with Allison Hammond and at times she's been playing very well, and we've been trying Mariah Coleman. And I think, you know, I talked to them both at practice yesterday, and I said it's not about, you know, competing with each other as much as it is helping the program right now. And, and to be able to run that 6-2, you really need someone in that position um, that, that can keep the blockers honest and, and um, you know, have some offense, generate some offense over there, but most importantly, um, block, you know, the best hitters basically on the other side and so you're blocking the outsides and, and so you really want to make sure that that's the priority. So I think we're still looking at, you know, who can do that best for us and who's preparing the best in practice and doing the extra work right now to put them in a situation to do that. But yeah, I definitely, I like the things that come with it. I still don't like that we can't get um, Kendall Merritt in the game more. And I think we're still trying to figure out a way to do that. But um, I think that's the struggle is when our passing goes down, then, then that's an issue because we're basically two-person passing. And Courtney struggled a little bit against Wisconsin, and, and you could see it was really stressful because then our offense doesn't run. So you have more hitters in the front row, but if you're not passing well, then you can't run the offense you want and to run. And on Saturday night, a 3-0 loss to Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and they're obviously on a tear, 25 straight sets. Yeah. One. Um, definitely frustrating. I think we went into that match with – with some confidence and playing at home, which was very nice, and coming off the big, you know, Minnesota win, um, and so we really talked to them about, you know, we're playing a team that is extremely efficient, you know, in, in how they play, and so to counteract that, you really have to go for it. Um, we looked at let's take a set first, you know, I mean, you don't really talk about winning the match, you have to win a set first, and and a lot of teams have not been able to even do that. So we really talked about that, and I thought we started off following the game plan, really sticking to the things we talked about. And, and the first set, you know, through the three quarters of it was really competitive. And I thought, okay, this is, this is good. We're taking a step forward. And then we kind of lost it. You know, then the wheels kind of came off for the last two and a half sets. Um, so I was disappointed in that, obviously. But we kind of went with the same mentality after the Illinois loss. Went in the locker room. Let's move on. You know, I think they had a lot of regrets about the way they handled that match. And I was happy about that. You know, they didn't really do the things they talked about that we talked about of going for it, you know, taking the big swings. We got safe. We got conservative. And especially with our serving and our passing. And, and when we do that, we, we don't play very well. So um, we said, let's get rid of it. We got to move on. We got a big week ahead of us. We got to get back to training and improving and working on some of the things we didn't do well against Wisconsin. And so we just left with that kind of attitude instead of dwelling on it so much. This week our SID Jeremy Rosenthal sat down with Corey Hodgnicki, the athletic trainer for the IU volleyball team, and asked what his duties are with the team. So let's take a look at that. Here with yeah. Corey, hanging out in the I lounge. And uh, Corey is our uh, athletic trainer. Um, Corey, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, your background, kind of where uh, you've been, uh, and kind of some of the different sports that you've uh, gotten to work with. Sure. Uh, I did my undergrad at Eastern Michigan University uh, in an uh, athletic training uh, undergraduate program there. I went to grad school at the University of Texas, uh, worked with the, uh, the football and the men's tennis teams there. Um, kind of bounced around a little bit. I was working a lot of football, um, spent some time at Northwestern, uh, a little bit of time at the University of Toledo. Um, then I found my way out to the University of Portland out in Oregon, uh, where I was working with the volleyball team there, uh, the baseball team there, and uh, that's really what kind of uh, got me.
got me into the sport of volleyball and uh, brought me here to, to IU. You know, we spend a lot of the time, uh, a lot of the morning, just doing some you know general treatments on some of the some of the girls if they need it. Uh, we also have some other administrative duties that we do uh, as an athletic training staff, so we try to take care of those, and that's also a time to. Uh, to catch up on all our paperwork and our documentation, uh, you know, because we are dealing with health uh, and medical issues. You know, there is the same documentation that you would see at a doctor's office or, or a hospital or anything like that. So that's how we spend a good chunk of our morning. Uh, you know, the afternoons we we go over to UGEM, we start getting ready for practice. Uh, we'll have our uh, pre-practice treatments, you know, heating up, stretching, foam rolling, just doing everything that we can do. Um, to get everyone ready for practice, taping ankles, wrists, you know, whatever it may be at the time. Um, and, you know, hopefully at practice we're just sitting there, is what I always like to say, and that we're not needed, because if we're needed at a practice, that generally means someone's hurt. Um, and so I've always said I have the greatest job in the world if I'm just sitting there, everyone's happy. Um, so we go through that. You know, game days are, are, are a lot the same, actually. Um, we end up doing a little bit more uh, kind of pre-game treatments, you know, again, just making sure everyone's uh, really ready to go. You know, we, we usually get a little bit more time with them on game days, so we're able to do a little bit more uh, just because they're on the weekends or, you know, uh, you know, there's they're later in the day, so there's not like class conflicts. Uh, you know, that's one of, one thing that we definitely have to work with. Work with uh, a great uh, bunch of girls and uh, coaches and staff. Uh, what's your favorite part about uh, working with the team? You know, I think, you know, over the years, I really just like the relationships that you build with these student athletes. Uh, you know, they are uh, kind of exceptional people. What they do uh, in college is not, you know, the, what the typical student does. You know, they're really people that are uh, determined, hardworking. You know, they have they have their goals athletically, uh, but also personally, you can see them kind of striving for those goals. And, I, you know, I really like, you know, just kind of being a part of that and being around that. I think it actually helps to kind of motivate myself. Um, you know, to keep to keep up with things and to keep going and keep try, striving to, to, to be the best that I can be because that's what you're just around every day. Uh, the other thing is is that it's usually always pretty fun, you know, when you get a group of, uh, you know, 15, 18 girls, you know, with a volleyball team, uh, you know, they tend to know each other really well and uh, they, they really kind of let their hair down sometimes, especially in my room. That's usually like a little escape. Uh, well, you know, there's no classes, it's not coaches, it's not meetings, it's not practice. It's almost like the, where they kind of let their hair down and uh, there's always always something uh, to laugh about or always good times going on in there, which is really fun too. I was a team that's been struggling, they're down towards the bottom of the league, but how, as a coach, do you have to prepare for a team? As we've talked about in the past, it's still a Big Ten school, uh, and they've still shown the ability to play with some of the upper level teams in the conference this uh, year, so how do you uh, go about not overlooking them and looking forward to the Nebraska match? I, I think Iowa's playing well. I mean, they just won two in a row. I think they have a lot of confidence. They're at home, and I think they play much better at home than they do on the road, and um, I think they're a much improved team. They have a great outside hitter, and, and uh, they run the slide really well, and so we're going to have to defend against that. And so we watched a ton of film on them, and we're going to be uh, very prepared uh, you know, just looking at what the kids have been watching over the last couple of days, a ton of film on Iowa, and so I know that they know the importance of the match as well. Um, we don't overlook anybody in the Big Ten, certainly as Indiana right now, and what we're trying to do and, and building back to where we want to get to the NCAA tournament, we don't look over to overlook one team. And so, um, you know, we know what a huge match it is and what a huge opportunity, and so we're going to be as prepared as we can possibly be for this match. And finally, Nebraska, the uh, best attended uh, team in the NCAA, thousands of fans every single match. Uh, is there anything you do extra to help prepare the team, especially the younger players on the team who maybe haven't played in an environment like that before? Um, no, you know, the thing I like about Nebraska is they have great fans. Uh, it's a really fun environment to play in, and, and they're not the typical rowdy fans that you would get more at Purdue and Illinois and places like that. They're really... Um, represent what you love about fans. They, they love the sport and they love great volleyball and they're very supportive of their program and, and um, I give props to them for that. That's great to have a school like that in the Big Ten. Um, our crowds are traditionally all the best in the nation, you know, but uh, obviously when you go to Nebraska it's a little bit different. Um, so it, it's a great opportunity. I love that they're in the Big Ten because of that. So um, 
no, I, I think it's fun for our kids to be able to play in front of and show their skills in front of, you know, 8,000 people. You know, what else do you want? But that's part of playing at this level. That's great. And that's going to do it for us this week here on Inside Indiana Volleyball. So for Coach Sherry Dunbar-Kuzan, I'm Sean Nash. Thanks for watching.